Let's quickly review our previous three episodes before we get into episode 5, and stay tuned right to the end for a quick ski tip. In episode 2, I discussed where on the foot we want to feel balanced as a result of our movements in skiing. I showed how to maintain shin contact, as well as countering to assist balancing on the outside ski. Episode 3 focused on movements to create a platform for a skidded and a carved arc, how we create our line of inclination, and how to connect to the outside ski. In our last video, episode 4, I showed you multiple transitions and how our movements direct our center of mass across our base of support. Episode 5 is the final chapter in Technique Exposed. Here I discuss how we can utilize our movements in the previous episodes to affect our arc and ski performance. Let's look at how our few simple movements have endless applications and outcomes. I look at three contributors to determining our outcome on snow. The first is where you make your movement. Is it in the direction change phase or the glide phase? Refer back to episode 1 for more information on phases. Then I think of two dials, one that controls the rate, so how fast or slow I move, and the other regulates the degree, how much or how little do I move. Let's look at a couple specific examples of becoming skillful with your movements. In this first example, the degree, or how much I twist the ski on the surface of the snow, is quite a lot. This creates a skidded arc to control my speed. Watch how the twisting of the ski creates the skidded arc However, you will notice the degree of counter does not increase throughout the arc. Now let's compare the same part of the arc, where on the left I use my adductor group of muscles and roll my foot to create a carved arc, while on the right side of the screen, the degree of this movement is less and the twisting is more. Look how much faster I get to the fall line on the left side of the screen. Let's now see this in short radius turns and how the degree of twist helps control my speed on a steep black slope while a more carved movement pattern results in a faster rate of descent on a blue slope. Lastly, here's a carved run where in the larger arcs, my rate of platform creation is slower, yet the degree of inclination is greater, compared to the shorter arcs where the rate I create my platform is quicker and the degree of inclination is less. Here it is in full speed. Check out how varying one movement can have a significant change in your outcome. With the degree of counter and connection pretty much remaining equal, but the line of inclination and rate of creating the platform varying, the result is a large versus short carved arc. When terrain changes or your desired outcome changes, you need to understand contribution and effect. Vary the degree and rate of your movements one at a time. Recognize the effect of what you contribute to your arc. Becoming skillful with your movements is what makes skiing so free and flowing. Here's your quick tip. I've been asked many times how to start a run so you're in control and rhythm instantly. Two things I do every run. First, I stop my foot into the bottom of my boot to feel my metatarsal heads and the heel pad. This engages the muscles in my feet and ensures that balance begins from the ground up. When I get up to the speed I want, I connect to my outside foot with the degree needed for my desired outcome. Now I'm in control and using the movement pattern required to achieve my outcome. I'm Warren Jobbit. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. See you soon.